Mazda Philippines has just released its latest updated subcompact offering, the Mazda 2. Now, unlike other car brands that offer multiple variants of their subcompact cars, Mazda Philippines has decided to bring in a single variant of the Mazda 2. It's called the Elite Trim. Now, today, I'm going to do a review of the sedan version of the Mazda 2 Elite. Let's do this. Before I begin with the car review, I'd like to extend a special shout out and thank you to Mazda Makati for giving me this opportunity to do this walk around car review of the Mazda 2. Now, if you're in the vicinity of Makati or the neighboring cities and you're looking for a Mazda, pay them a visit in their showroom and check out their entire lineup. Now let's get on with the review. The subcompact car category is one of the most hotly contested car segments in the Philippines today. With its young population, it is quite obvious why this is so. Young urban professionals and millennials would want to be mobile and go places without having to rely on our dismal public transport system. So why did Mazda Philippines bring in a single variant of the Mazda 2? Well, the official statement was to simplify the buying process. Now looking at the features of the Mazda 2 Elite, it is easy to see that Mazda Philippines was able to achieve a good balance of features, comfort, and affordability in the Mazda 2 Elite. Looking at the design of the Mazda 2, you could see that it follows the same updated Kodo design language that we've seen in the new Mazda 3 and the new Mazda CX-30, albeit in a cuter, smaller package. Now, it doesn't matter whatever you choose, whether you go for the hatchback or the sedan variant, the Mazda 2 interprets that updated Kodo design language beautifully, and you will have quite a handsome looking subcompact car right here. One of the key design elements of the updated Kodo design language of Mazda is this floating Mazda emblem right here in the front grille. As you can see, the front grille has been rendered all in black, which gives it an illusion as if this chrome Mazda emblem is floating in a sea of black. And it's a beautiful rendering of the Kodo design language of Mazda, which can also be found in the updated Mazda 2. Now moving on to the headlights, you will note that the headlights sport this LED daylight running lights in angel eyes format and the headlights themselves are made of LED with auto leveling which is a feature that cannot be found in the subcompact car offerings especially in Japanese brands. Mazda has decided to equip the Philippine variant with LED headlights because well the Elite trim wants to be distinguished from the other subcompact car offerings in the market by being a little bit more premium than its competitors. Looking at the wheels and tires, the Mazda 2 Elite comes in a 16-inch wheel which is finished in this gray metallic color. The design is pretty much standard for most subcompact offerings. Now the tires are well, 18560 in terms of size and these are pretty much economy tires just to help you with your fuel economy. So it's pretty much standard, just like most subcompact car offerings. Moving to the back of the Mazda 2 sedan, you will see that we have here a standard rear view camera, which is pretty much standard for most 2020 car offerings. And looking down here to the bumper, you will see the first, well, design fail, in my opinion, of Mazda. You see the Mazda 2 sedan sports this huge fake vent at the lower part of the rear bumper which shows you that despite the elegance of the updated Kodo design language of Mazda, Mazda has finally succumbed to the fake vent phenomenon that's happening to most Japanese car manufacturers, at least with their Mazda 2 sedan. Now, this doesn't really serve any function except to add a little bit more design to the back, which personally, I'd give it a pass because I really don't like it. Now moving further downward from the fake vent area of the rear bumper, you will also see that Mazda has decided to save up a few dollars when it comes to their tailpipes because all of Mazda's offerings in its lineup sport dual actual tailpipes except for the Mazda 2. The Mazda 2 only comes with a single tailpipe. You'll see there's no tailpipe here. We only have a standard tailpipe there. It doesn't even have a chrome finish. It's just a regular pipe-like tailpipe. The design is pretty good from the front to the sides, but when it comes to the rear, I'm really not too keen with how Mazda executed 
the rear part of the Mazda 2. One good thing about it though is that it also comes with rear parking sensors so that should aid you with your parking duties as well but it still doesn't uh, make up for the well for me for the poor design that happened in the rear bumper right here. Moving on to the trunk space of the Mazda 2, we have your 280 liters of trunk space, which is not class leading, but it's decent enough for its size. But if you would need some more uh, space for your luggage or for your stuff, all you need to do is pull on this latch right here, and that should help you tumble back the rear seat backs, which would give you now 950 liters of trunk space. Moving on to the engine, what you have here is a 1.5 liter Skyactiv G engine which is good for a 108 horsepower and 141 newton meters of torque. Now the Mazda 2 also comes with the G Vectoring Control Plus which makes millisecond adjustments to your throttle input to make sure that the Mazda 2 would remain balanced, would remain stable, and it will ensure that you have a comfortable ride as well. Notably missing is the i-stop and i-e loop feature which is found in the other Mazda offerings. And that's actually a good thing for me because you don't have to turn it off, especially in stop and go traffic. And at the same time, since this is a 1.5 liter engine anyway, fuel economy would be stellar for this vehicle. So you don't really need that IE loop or I stop doohickey to improve your fuel economy in the Mazda 2. Now, while the Mazda 2 is a subcompact sedan in this case, or a hatchback, it's still a four-door sedan. That means you've got some space in the back seat. Now, I'm going to check out the back seat just to find out what kind of comfort we could expect from something like this. I'm not really going to expect much because, well, it's a subcompact car. So, let's find out right now if you are a passenger in the Mazda 2. Well, the first thing that I note is the brown cloth of the seats are good it's done rendered very well it's in dark brown it makes you think that it's leather upon first seeing it now the seats itself are quite comfortable they're quite supportive and you've got a good amount of knee room as well now when you close the door you will note that because of the updated Kodo design language, the belt line of the car is a little bit high, which means that the rear windows are a little bit small. But it doesn't really give me that feeling of claustrophobia because you've got a nice domed arch up here in the ceiling, which improves on my headroom at the back. Now you don't also have your air vents at the back which is all right because well it is a small car which means that the air conditioning should be able to cool down the interior quite fast you'll also know that there are no dome lights in the center well because it is also a small car well if you're a rear passenger and you need the light might as well just use the the, the torch on your cell phone notably missing as well is the pocket at the back of the driver's seat which is a feature that can be found across all the offerings of mazda except the CX-8 which has four uh, seat back pockets. We have a back pocket however on the passenger side and well that's a place where you can store your stuff. The materials used are quite premium. It is still in plastic and you've got some cloth inserts as well on the side of the doors which is but it's tastefully done. It's in black with some brown stitching which goes well with the fabric of the seats and yeah overall I would say that if you are just uh, four passengers in the Mazda 2, you would be very comfortable at the rear. But if you have to bring in a fifth passenger who'd sit in the center, then it would be a bit of a tight fit. And in fact, if you're going on a long trip and you're three across here at the, at the back, I would say that at the end of the trip, you might have some form of romance already with the person in the middle because you'd be that close. Okay, now let's hop into the driver's seat of the Mazda 2. Upon opening the door, you will notice that the seats are not finished in leather. Instead, this is dark brown cloth with some contrast white stitching. It's actually done pretty well. It's a two-tone dark brown and something that's a little darker brown, but in a different uh, cloth material, which should help with your ventilation as well. Now, the Mazda 2 doesn't come with automatic uh, adjustments for the driver's seat nor the passenger. This is still a subcompact offering after all. And 
let's hop in and find out what's inside. Stepping inside the Mazda 2, the first thing you'll note is the steering wheel is the usual standard steering wheel of Mazda, but this one is still leather wrapped, so Mazda didn't scrimp on the materials for the steering wheel, as well as the shift knob. The shift knob is also finished nicely in leather with some metal accents as well. Now you'll also note in the steering wheel, you've got your Bluetooth uh, cell phone calling there and some buttons for your infotainment system. You don't have cruise control though, but peeking out at the back of the steering wheel, you'll note that you also have paddle shifters that can be found in the Mazda 2. So the Elite trim, both in hatchback and sedan model, come with paddle shifters to help you shift this wonderful six-speed automatic transmission. And I repeat, Mazda still is not using a CVT, which is great because it's still a Skyactiv six-speed automatic transmission. And it also comes with sport mode. We have sport mode here, which helps improve the response of your throttle when it's in sport mode and you can actually put it in uh, paddle shifters as well. So kudos to Mazda for not going into the CVT bandwagon even with the Mazda 2. Moving on from the automatic transmission in the sport mode, you have here the manual e-brake. It still doesn't have an electronic e-brake which is pretty much standard for a subcompact offering. You have your standard controls here for your Mazda infotainment system. And one thing I note is that it has this squarish plastic bump right here at the bottom of the controls. And I've never seen that in other Mazda offerings. Now I'm wagering that the, the reason why we have this is we have a couple of cup holders right here. And this is just to make sure that your drink will not tumble over into the controls and thus ca causing it to, you know, to become wet and have a uh, short circuit. So I'm thinking this is just a bumper stop to make sure that your drinks would stay in place. Now going into the climate control system. The Elite variant comes with automatic climate control as well. It's not dual zone, however, because, well, it is a small car. You don't really need a dual zone climate control. And under that, underneath that, you have your USB inputs for your uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is also standard for the Mazda 2 Elite. Now going up to the dashboard, the lower dashboard, you'll have here a nice textured black, shiny black material that's inserted right here and it's a nice rendering as well it's not carbon fiber but it has that carbon fiber feel to it the dashboard itself is made up of plastics it's a little bit uh, lower quality than those found in the mazda 3 and the, the cx uh, series of mazda and you have your cloth inserts as well on the doors in terms of the infotainment we have your usual mazda connect right here it's still not the recessed screen that we can find in the c x30 and the mazda 3 it's still the same old screen that we can find in the older mazda models starting the car you could now see that well we have the standard gauges right here we have the speedometer right in the middle which is still an analog format it's not digital yet but you've got a digital tachometer to the left and you've got um, some, an information screen to the right which shows you stuff like your fuel your range and your temperature as well overall this is pretty much standard for most uh, Mazda offerings as well. So there you have it. That is the Mazda 2 sedan in Elite trim. Well, we only get that single Elite trim in the Philippine market anyway, but you can get it either in sedan or hatchback versions. Now, if you're looking for a city car that you can drive around in tight city roads and park in tight city parking spots, but at the same time, you don't want to compromise on that premium level feel and that dynamic driving experience, then the Mazda 2 is a compelling car to put in your options list. Now, how much is this Mazda 2 going for? Well, Mazda Philippines has simplified the buying process as well in terms of the pricing because they've priced both the hatchback and the sedan versions with a single price of 995,000 pesos. Now, if you're thinking, wow, that's a lot of money to pay for a subcompact car. Well, get this. This is still a four-star Euro NCAP safety rating in terms of crash tests. And at the same time, you get a lot of the premium material and premium feel and premium options that are not normally available in budget subcompact car offerings. Now, if you take all of that into consideration, then the Mazda 2 Elite is a compelling city car to purchase 
at less than a million pesos. Once again, thank you guys for watching one of my car reviews. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel, hit that like button, send me some love in the comments below, and tell me what you think about this Mazda 2. Would you rather get the sedan or would you rather get the hatchback? Hit me up in the comments and let's start a discussion. I'll see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.